Hi, I'm Jeff Baust. I teach in electronic production and design at Berkeley College of Music, and I teach Pro Tools classes with Berkeley Online. In this video, we're going to use Elastic Audio to take a drum loop and get it to work with an existing track in Pro Tools. So let's have a look at that. Okay, in this movie, what we're going to look at is using Elastic Audio to help us add a loop from my loop library to an existing production. Uh, so I've got this song here that I'm working on, and here's what the chorus of the song sounds like right now. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a loop that I found in my loop library to the chorus to give it a little more rhythmic interest. And so what I have here is I found this loop here. And I'm showing now just a couple of the tracks from the drum kit uh, along with this uh, new loop here. And the loop right now by himself sounds like this. He's actually not at the right tempo of the song, of course. With the loop added to the song, it sounds like this. And I do have it turned up maybe a little too loud so we can be sure to hear it in context. So it's too slow. So there's a couple ways I can address that if I wanted to. One of the things I could do here uh, is just simply time stretch it uh, and, uh, you know, make it uh, fit the tempo of the song. That's a perfectly fine way to go about it. Um, what I can do is I can check my preferences under processing to see what the time compression and expansion plugin will be. And in my case, it'll be the Avid Time Shift plugin. And I would go find maybe a uh, preset that I think will work. Drums Rhythmic is a good choice here. And so then I change my trimmer tool from the standard tool to the time compression and expansion tool. And all I have to do is just change the length of this loop to conform to the song. And if I have my cursor set up here in grid mode, and if I have the grid snapping to one bar, then I can just go ahead and there it is. And it just ran a, uh, a processing where it just did some time uh, compression to this loop and just made it a bit shorter. It made a new audio file, put the new audio file on my hard drive, and here's a clip that references the new audio file. So it works perfectly fine. I'm going to hit undo though. Uh, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to do it with elastic audio. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them just so we can talk about it. And also um, because there's, there's a few other things I can do um, pretty quickly with elastic audio. And also I'm not really committing to any processing yet because elastic audio can do its time stretching in real time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the track in an elastic audio algorithm mode here, and I'm going to choose uh, rhythmic. And so what we have now is a analysis of all of the different transients in this uh, loop. And you can see that there's an analysis marker for each place where there's a uh, transient of some kind. And you can go through if you want and give it a listen and also uh, edit this if you want. For example, I think it's all pretty good, but he does a little drag on the snare here, and I'm not sure we really need to have analysis markers for the drag because it was just kind of done a little freely, um, especially since we won't be doing any radical time stretch. And I think I might just say I'm going to get in here with the grabber tool, and I could move them around if I wanted to, or if I hold down Option-Alt, I can go ahead and just maybe get rid of them. And it's really up to me what I want to do with them. Uh, I think I'm going to just see what it feels like if I just leave them be. Um, and like so. So now what I'm going to do here is the same thing I did a minute ago, which is to go ahead and use the uh, TCE tool of the uh, trim tool um, to go ahead and do this time stretching. The difference is I'm not going to be doing any processing to the audio. That is to say, I can freely time stretch this uh, uh, clip here, and all I'm really doing is having the elastic audio do the time stretching for me. And again, if I set myself up for grid mode and I go ahead and pull this guy over here so that the clip is exactly one bar long, I have the same result. And in context, and I'm in business. The difference is, of course, I haven't done any processing. The original loop uh, file is still exactly the same, and I can commit to this one once I'm done really tweaking it. Because I might want to tweak things a little further. I might decide that I want to think about the groove a little bit here. So one of the things I can do if I want is I can actually now quantize this audio. And I can quantize it uh, by uh, the actual analysis markers here 
that are in the clip. So for example, I can say, well, let's go ahead to the event uh, menu here and under event operations here, we say quantize. And Pro Tools is set up to quantize elastic audio events. And I can choose a quantization template. So for example, I can say, I want to just go ahead and hard quantize it to 16th notes. And you'll see what happens when I hit apply, they'll move just a little bit. And so now I have this. <laughs> which is, you know, maybe I like that. Maybe it's too rigid, too inflexible. I don't like that. I can try other quantization templates. For example, they have the MPC style grooves, for example, and I can choose, you know, uh, a bit of swing for the 16th notes, like 53% swing, where the 16th notes will be ever so slightly swung, and I'll hit apply, and it feels like this. I mean, it's not a big difference there. It's really just in the nooks and crannies between the eighth notes. Uh, uh, but you know, if I like that, I could have that uh, or whatnot. So I can, you know, either, um, you know, with a straight 16th or one of these quantization templates, I can go ahead and get the kind of uh, a feel that I want here for my uh, loop that I've added to this production. Now, in addition, if I want, I can try to actually take a bit of the groove from the song itself. And uh, so that's why I've got the kick, snare, hi-hat, and overheads tracks set up with their own group here. Uh, it's because I want to see if I can find a groove from this drum performance here. And I'm actually not going to get it from the chorus, uh, uh, even though that would make the most sense. It's because he's playing the open hi-hat here. And it's a little harder to find that groove, but it's got the same feel in the verse. And so I was thinking somewhere around like bar eight, it might be, it might feel pretty good to uh, uh, see if I can extract a groove from the uh, drum performance here. Something like that. So what I'm going to do is get uh, a Beat Detective to help me out here. And Beat Detective does a lot of different things, and one of them is Groove uh, Template Extraction. And the idea is I can make a Groove Template from audio from a performance, let's say like the drums here. Uh, and of course, it's always important with uh, Beat Detective to click Capture Selection so it knows the bars of this selection, you know, the bars that it spans. And then here, I'll go ahead and click Analyze. I'm going to zoom in on just the uh, selected audio here. And then I'm going to start dropping the sensitivity. And uh, I've got the resolution here already set to subbeats. So it will actually find, you know, eighth notes and sixteenth notes and whatnot. And you can see it's found a bunch of things where it thinks there's a transient. And therefore, uh, uh, this is what it will use to come up with a groove template. And it actually all looks pretty good because this is very simple. The hi-hat and the uh, kick and the snare, and then the overheads help out a little bit, but it's mostly these other tracks. Um, and uh, it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, if I wanted to, I could, with the grabber tool, I could get in here and, you know, uh, manipulate things a little bit. If I put myself in slip mode, I can slip things around. If I needed to, I can hold down Option, Alt, and you can see I get the little negative sign here, and I can go ahead and delete it if I want to. So there's, there's lots of different things I could do um, if I wanted to modify this groove template, but I think what it's come up with looks pretty good here. Uh, so I'm just going to say, let's extract this as a groove template. And I could either save it to disk or just save it to a temporary memory they call the groove clipboard. And I'm just going to do that. So that then I can go back to the chorus of the song here and go back to this particular loop that we have. And I'm going to open now the, again, from the event menu, the event operations, quantize, and for the quantization template here, I'm actually going to use what's stored in the groove uh, clipboard here, which is the thing I just extracted from the drum performance. Then I can hit apply. And again, things move a little bit. And now this is the groove from the verse applied to this loop here in the chorus. And it actually feels pretty good. One more time. Like so. So then from here, I'm in pretty good shape. I can just say, well, now I just want this to play for the whole, uh, 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 you know, the whole length of the chorus. So I can just put myself in, uh, again, grid mode, and I can change my uh, a trimmer tool to the loop mode here. And I can just say, I just would like this to loop until the end of the chorus. And so now I've got me a, a drum loop that I can apply to the uh, chorus of the song here. And I'll just show you quick that uh, one of the things I'd probably do is throw in an EQ like this and shave the bottom end 
off of this loop just so it fits into the context of the mix a little better. I've already got a kick drum track. I'm not sure I really need two. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I've got a fairly aggressive high pass here and then I might tweak it as uh, I get into mixing and that sort of thing. And I'll pull it down so it sits into the context of the song a little better. Uh, and uh, it goes a little something like this. So then I've got this extra loop and I can do all kinds of things with it. When I get to mixing, I can EQ it further. You know, I could bracket it with a, a low pass filter as well to get it to feel a little bit, you know, lo-fi, that sort of thing. I can compress it. I can put it through a little distortion, um, but it's just another color that I can add to the rhythmic fabric of the song in the chorus. So that's our friend Elastic Audio helping us take this uh, loop and, uh, uh, you know, get it to conform to tempo and also get it to... Uh, uh, you know, conform a bit to the groove of the music.